Okay, my name's Todd Kolbeck. Watch the screen. Today we're going to be talking about getting a commitment. Yes, yes, yes. Now, first of all, you need to realize I have a wonderful template for you. After you learn your presentation today, I got some cool PowerPoint slides that you could take what you learn, plug it in, and walk into a client and present. Is that cool? But to get them, you got to send, turn on your cell phone, send me a text right now, sales105, your name, email, 258885. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to do that, then we're going to begin. No, these are, if you were in my previous class, that was sales 101, sales 105, different notes. You're going to want them. After you see this today, believe me, you're going to want them. Can you hear me okay? Is this thing on? Yeah? Okay. You're going to get it shortly if you didn't get it already. You got yours? So the answer is yes. You know, I, I said it so you're going to get it about an hour after you entered it. So if you didn't get it yet, maybe by the end of this class. Okay, so thank you very much for coming. Okay, my, not, my name's Todd Kolbeck. I am on the faculty of the Pocket MBA, and I'm gonna be your instructor if you're enrolled in, in sales training. Today, we're gonna be talking about getting a commitment. Another word for getting the commitment, who has ever heard the term GTM? Can anyone guess what GTM stands for? Get the money. Right, show me the money, get the money, okay? At the end of the day, can, can you provide any IT services if you don't close the business? Now, how many of you have been through classes where they teach you closing, and it's basically every time they give you an objection, you got a different answer, and they give you a whole book? Have you seen that? That's not what we're going to do today, OK? How many of you have ever seen those books with like 100 different closing techniques, and you, know, you keep trying different ones? You know, OK, again, that's not what you're going to learn from me. You are going to learn. The most simplest way to close in the world, and it's very easy, getting a commitment, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If you don't bond with somebody and make a friend, you didn't take that last class, this is going to be a lot harder to get a sale. The most important part of getting a commitment, don't you think it's a lot easier to bond with someone when you already like each other and you've made a friend, right? You know, that's, that's a part of doing business. So if you're going to use this, it's going to be fantastic, but it's going to work 100 times better if you apply everything I taught you in the previous class. If you were in the previous class, it'll be available uh, later, um, but I really want to focus on this today. Okay, everybody, look at this slide, okay? If you never had any sales training in your life and you have a product that is just okay, not necessarily great, 3% of the population, in, no matter what you're buying, is going to be buying something in the next 30 to 90 days they're going to buy right now. Quick show of hands, how many people here are looking to buy a car in the next 90 days? Quick show of hands. Okay, I got one or two hands, about 3%. Okay, that's how it is. Now, 7% of the buying public are at least going to be open to your idea. They're maybe thinking about buying whatever it is you're selling, okay? Now, if you have no sales training at all, and your product is just mediocre, you can at least close some of these people, the people who are open to it or the people who are buying right now. But this next segment, how do you turn someone who's not even thinking about it suddenly into a prospect? How many of you were in my last class? Remember the question, what's your biggest challenge? 
When you ask that, that turns that other number three, they're not thinking about it. Suddenly they realize they got a problem. What do they start doing? They start thinking about it. Now, how many of you have had this experience with the fourth segment, people who think they're not interested? You know, quite frankly, is it possible that someone really doesn't know what you do, but they think they do? That's this segment. They had some other person who they thought was the same as you, try to sell them something and they weren't interested. They didn't realize that really wasn't you, what you really do. Those are the people who think they're not interested. Now, who are the people who are definitely not interested? Probably your competitors, right? <laughs> you know, will your competitors buy from you? I don't think so. You can pretty much count, but who knows? It's possible, right? You know, stranger things have happened, but those people are definitely not interested. If you don't have electricity, you're probably in that category, okay? All right, now, five steps to closing a sale. Sales 101, we covered making a friend. Today, or in this segment, we're going to talk about getting a commitment, okay? Getting a commitment. Now, what would happen to your business if you were a master at getting commitment? In fact, let me change that. What would happen to your life if you were a master at getting other people to give you commitments? Oh, <laughs> okay, anything else? Would you say that your business could potentially change? It will change like you will not believe. You know, I teach people this skill all the time. And when they meet me, they have a problem. Their problem is, Todd, I don't have enough clients. After they meet me, guess what their new problem is? I can't keep up with all these prospects. Literally, true story, okay, literally. So it's a good problem to have, okay, but this is what can happen when you master this skill. Now, our agenda today, you're gonna learn how to create a competitive advantage, okay? If people are gonna buy from you, you know, it helps if you have a competitive advantage. Now, after you have a competitive advantage, does it help if people don't know what it is? Doesn't really help you. So you got to know how to actually communicate what that competitive advantage is. I call that a value proposition. And then number three, I'm going to teach you how to make an offer that can't be refused. How does that sound for an agenda? Are we good? Okay, we're good? All right, all right. Well, we will see. We will see. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, some of the people have attended my other classes. I've taught here before in the um, SMB Nation. I've taught OneNote. I've taught about getting referrals. Um, I'm the president of the Colbeck Coaching Group. I do have an MBA, and uh, my MBA was in strength-based leadership. I practice martial arts, and I live in South Beach. So how do you transition from making a friend to make everyone who was in my last class, you all learned how to make a friend, right? Right, but now how do you transition from that into making a sale? Well, number one, you need to understand your competitive advantage. You need to understand it. Number two, you need to describe that competitive advantage to a prospect. And then number three, you need to make the prospect's buying uh, process very, very easy. That's how you do it. So, right now, who can share with the class the answer to this question? Why would I buy from you instead of a competitor? Someone walks in, this is what they're thinking. Guys, everybody who you talk to, they might be too polite to say this, but this is what they're, think about the last big purchase you made. Weren't you thinking about this on your last big purchase? Right? Okay, now, who can share how they would answer that question right now? I woke up to you, I got money, why should I buy from you instead of your competitor? Okay, I got one, a volunteer, please. My wife makes the best chocolate, homemade chocolate chip cookies. And you might laugh, but I don't think she has the sale. Okay, so the answer was, my wife makes the best chocolate chip cookies, and you might laugh, but that's how we can close sales, and I'm not laughing, because I have seen it done. In fact, that's a great way to get referrals, too. Okay, you can get some of these cookies and you get a referral. Okay, anyone else like to share? Nobody else is selling what I'm selling. So the answer is nobody else is selling what I'm selling. Okay, all right, anyone else? My competitors hire people that are looking for a job. We hire people that are looking for a website. Okay, so my competitors hire people who are looking for a job. <laughs> We hire people who are looking for a way of life, okay? 
those are some examples. Thank you very much, everyone, for sharing. Thank you. Now, let's talk about how to create competitive advantage. Number one, the first step, you need to analyze your competitors. If you all have competitors that have got free newsletters, when you leave, sign up for them, right? Get a little intel on what they're doing. If you've never been to their websites, check it out. Number two, you need to understand what you do well, okay? You need to build on your own strengths of what you do well. Number three, you need to create, look at the key word here, measurable. Competitive advantages need to be measurable. And then number four, okay, actually these three things. So you need to analyze competitors, understand your strength, create measurable advantages. Okay, now, if you have a pen and a paper, break it out. If you've got some other writing operandus, break it out. If not, just think about this next slide. I'm gonna give you two minutes and either write it down or think about your competitors. Describe them. What is it that they do well, and where are they weak? You need to think about this right now because it's going to lead to something else. Think about this for a moment. And I will share with you, the more accurate you can fill in this uh, uh, worksheet when we're done, the better you're going to be able to have competitive advantage in the marketplace. We have four fields, your competitor's name and location, competitor's description, competitor's strengths, competitor's weaknesses. It's amazing when I make people think about this, they immediately see opportunity, usually within five minutes, just because they thought about it. About 30 more seconds. And I encourage you to, to, to you know, continue this on after the workshop. Really makes you think, doesn't it? OK, excellent. Now, now we need to focus on you, OK? I'm going to tell you, you know what my competitive advantage is? I give great service. That's my competitive advantage. What do you think my competitors say? That he gives bad service? Er, I don't think so. But if instead I say, we give great service, if you're one of our clients and your network goes down, we'll have one of our technicians there within two hours. Is that a little bit different in terms of the way I described it? Instead of we give great service? Now, I don't know that you could do it within two hours, but the key thing here is it needs to be measurable. Now, your next exercise is you have to look at these items. Can you all see these slides up here? Can you read this? I'll read it to you. In fact, you know what, I'll do, yeah, um, I better read it. How do you measure service, quality, reputation, good results, staff, intellectual capital? How many of you got some letters after your name about some certifications you took? Right, that's intellectual capital, that's great. Consistency, responsiveness, take a moment, I want you to write down at least three measurable things that you feel are advantages in the marketplace for your business. At least three, and the key word, it has to be measurable. When we're done, I'm gonna ask for some examples, okay? So either think or write. Three measurable competitive advantages
If you come up with more than three, that's fine, but at least three. Someone's going to ask you, why should I buy from you instead of a competitor? And you've got three answers for them sitting in your head or right in front of you in your notes. Okay, who'd like to share one of their competitive advantages? Yes, in the back. Wow, that's fantastic. Can I put you on the mic? Because I want to say it back so everyone could hear it, but I, could, I, I couldn't remember how to say it. So could you just, just talk into that, Mike? I said uh, that we understand your business. And what I mean by that is, is that we have on staff someone who is an MBA and a practicing attorney who has had direct experience um, in healthcare as well, practicing over 10 years in that field and in the law field 20 years. So we truly understand the perils and tribulations of what you're either um, healthcare practice is going through or your law firm is going through. Fantastic. How many of your competitors do you think could say the same thing? I guarantee you probably nobody. Fantastic. Would anyone else like to share? Okay, yes. Here's just a moment. Let me give you the mic. Um, we care about you as a customer. Um, you're more than just a dollar sign to us. Uh, you're part of our uh, IT services family. And we promise to uh, fix what's broken and do no harm. That's our logo. Okay, thank you very much. You know, I even got a special mic for this. Let me grab it. Okay, anyone else like to share? I got the special mic. Please, somebody. One more? Okay. Oh. Okay, all right. So, uh, a wealth of services. So what I'm hearing is you pay us one fee and it's, you get all the services that you need, yeah. right? Okay, okay, very good. Uh, clients have trusted us for over 15 years uh, with uh, their IT infrastructure as, as, as an IT partner. Okay, so for over 15 years, clients have trusted us yes. as an IT partner. Okay, all right, so I'm going to share with you, you have the beginning now of your uh, competitive advantage. Now, I'm going to share with you, you are probably going to want to work more than just two minutes on this, because you want to think to yourself, how many of you feel that there's a competitive advantage that you could have if you added it to your business? There's a lot of vendors out there selling stuff, right? Maybe you could take some of those products and services and add it to your plate. Maybe you could take some of the skills that you're learning in this class and then you know, offer it to your clients and, and give them you know, uh, so, some added value. Now, uh, the next thing, okay, you need to get a prospect's attention in the first minute if you want to generate enough interest for them to listen to you for 30 minutes. In my last class, someone says, Todd, what if you only have a minute with somebody? What is it that you should say? Well, I got to tell you, if you can't get their attention, they're not going to listen for the rest of your time. So you have something called a value proposition. Your value proposition is how you take your competitive advantage and bundle it into a statement. Okay, that's what we're going to work on next. Now, 
your value proposition should answer the question, why should someone use you instead of a competitor? It needs to be measurable. Measurable. That is a very key thing. And then finally, once you have a value proposition, it should be everywhere. You should leave it as a tagline on your voicemail. It should be a footer in your email or in your stationery. When you're meeting someone and they ask you what you do, that's the first thing that should be off your lips is your value proposition. So I want you to uh, either think about this if you don't have a pen or if you have a pen or some type of note-taking material, write it down. Number one, and by the way, you're going to use this in my next uh, slide, so make sure you get this in your head. Who's your target market? Write it down. And you know, try to focus on some kind of niche, whether it's an industry, whether it's the size of the business, whether it's the location of a business. But your market isn't everybody. Try to just narrow it into a niche. Next, I want you to write those deepest benefits that you provide. So if somebody is your client, or actually look at somebody who is your client, what are the benefits that they've gotten from you? Think of two or three of the deepest benefits your clients get from you. Write it down, or at least have it in your head. And then finally, write down a few of the advantages you just listed. So those things you just told me, write them down. Now we're going to plug it into the next slide, so get this information ready. I'm going to give you about another minute. Okay, now, look at this statement. This is a template for your value proposition. We help, remember I just made you write down your target market? Fill in the blank. We help, whatever you wrote down for your target market, get, remember those deepest benefits I just had you write down? Fill in the blank. By providing, through providing, blank your competitive advantages, I call this the bait. So play with it. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to ask for some examples. Is this clear, everybody? Can you see OK? Is it clear? Everyone can see? OK. We help blank your target market, get blank those benefits you just listed, buy or through providing blank some of your competitive advantages. About another minute, then I'd like to, I would love if someone would have, be happy to share. About another minute. Okay, good. I see these pens moving, looking good. Okay, once you have a competitive advantage, once you roll it into a value statement, you want to use it in everything. 
Will this work for inside sales if, if uh, you're calling people and you're introducing yourself and the first thing that you share with them is this, would that work pretty good? Right away, it'll blow up that traditional, I'm not interested, because if they're interested in this, they found out right away what it is that you do. Would it work if someone walked up to you and says, what do you do for a living? Would it work when you walk into a sales call and, so, and you're walking up to someone you've never met before and the first thing you let them know is this? Do you see how important this is? If you get their interest right up front in the first minute, now you're going to get permission to continue. Okay? Now, please, who would like to share the value proposition from this exercise? Okay, thank you. We help CPAs increase productivity, provide added value to their clients, control risk, and increase revenues with our hosted QuickBooks solution. Give, them a, give it up. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next. Thank you. We help nonprofit organizations get top grade IT solutions that fit within their budgets by providing superior technical engineering coupled with business consulting that is able to capitalize on grant requirements and re maximize returns. Unbelievable. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Okay, yes, yes. We help MSPs make money by helping their customers save money on voice and data services. Whoa, fantastic. Thank you. Very, very clear. Very clear. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Oh, oh. We help DC law firms increase productivity by reducing downtime by being prepared for any disaster. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Give it up, give it up. Okay, another. Wait, here we go. We help financial firms by ice taking care of your information technology while you can focus on your business by providing end-to-end -end IT services. Fantastic, thank you very much. Okay, everyone give it up. Okay, anybody else? Pardon me, up front, oh. We help small business get quality technical services support by providing deliverable skill, a good reputation, friendliness, and a sense of urgency. Okay, fantastic, thank you very much. Okay, now, tell me, how do those sound compared to the ones we heard in the beginning? Does anyone feel, does everyone here feel a little more polished now? So, do, yes, do you, know, do you like what you got away from this so far? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, did I sell anything yet? I didn't sell anything, did This is class is about getting commitment. But if I don't get their interest, are they going to hear what I have to sell? Right? You got to do this first. All this is is debate, but I didn't get a commitment. Now, let's talk about the hook, okay? So, the hook is, here's what I do, okay? And then the guy says, okay, and your hook is, what's been your biggest challenge with that issue? Okay, so if I were to say, um, you know, I provide, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, IT solutions for financial services firms, so you can focus on what you do well and don't have to worry about IT, is that clear? What's been your biggest challenge around that issue? What did I just do? Wham! Now he's thinking. Now he's worried. Now I've got him engaged. Do you see how that works? Questions? Yes? No? Okay? Yes? I think that's brilliant. I mean, first of all, you tell him what you do, and then you say, what's been your biggest challenge with that issue? Right. And guess what? He, whatever he says, is that going to open the door for you? Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if I would have just walked in and asked him, does he want to buy my stuff, and I didn't do this first, I'm like coming from the moon. But if I set him up, I got the bay, here's what I do well, the hook, what is your challenge around it? Once he tells me a challenge, what do I have now? I've got an opening, right? But what do you need to do? Okay, you baited, you got the fish on the line, what do you got to do next? You got to reel them in. So what do you need for that? You're going to need a net. Now, do you all feel that you can answer this question? We just did the exercise a little bit better than what we did in the beginning? Yes. Okay. Now, and I just went around and I got examples, so we're going to move this along. Okay, we're not going to do the role play for this. We just got examples instead. Now, let's talk about your offer, okay? So we, we, we basically made the bait. We set the hook. Now, the net is you have to have an offer. How many of you have ever walked into a prospect and just quoted them a price. Show of hands. 
So you gave the person a choice, which was either yes or no. And if they didn't say yes, what did you have to do? Battle, right? Now you had to battle. That is not how you should present. You should always offer a prospect one of three choices. Number one, you need to have a lower price basic package. Number two, you need to have a mid-price standard package. Number three, you need to have a higher price premium package. How many of you currently present your services on a one-page menu in this format? Okay, about four people. How does this work compared to just telling them a price? Very well, thank you very much. Once I teach this to people, they use it for everything. It works fantastic. Now, here's the amazing thing. How many of you are scared to quote a really high fee because the person might say no? A lot of people are scared to quote high fees. Did you know that 20% of the people will always buy the best thing? Did you ever go to a concert and see the front row empty? Is that the most expensive seat in the house? Someone always buys it, okay? 20% of the people, I guess in Vegas, what do they call those people, what, high? 20% of the people are high rollers. And did you know that if you don't put out something premium, you could have closed the sale and they'll just leave and go someplace else that does? So you need to have a super high premium offer. Now, this, I don't expect you to be able to read these small letters, don't worry. Let me just read it to you, okay? Now, this is an example. Don't copy it. This is not for you. This is just an example, okay? Don't copy it. Now, in this example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present to you, Mr. Client, there are three ways that we can work together. I've got a silver level of service, a gold, and a platinum. Your civil, silver level of service, I'm going to map out your, your uh, work and document flow, and I'm going to design a network to improve it. If anything breaks, you can call us and we'll come in and fix it. I can offer you broadband ISP. If, you, if you're not happy with your provider, it's too slow. You know, I can recommend someone for that. And we're even going to review your website. And if you want us to design a new one, we could do that. And we bill on an hourly basis for this. Any of these services will do for you 150 to 250 an hour. Was that clear, everyone? Did I make myself clear with that? OK, clear. Now, let me tell you about our gold level of service. We're going to review tasks related to your work and document flow. We're actually going to recommend software and apps that we think would improve it. We're not only going to come when your network breaks, we're going to monitor it before it breaks and provide preventive maintenance. And if something does happen to break, we'll show up as well. Now, in addition to broadband, we're also going to offer communication services with VoIP. And in addition to making a website for you, we're even going to host it and we can help you with some basic website marketing like SEO and pay-per-click. We're going to charge you $40 to $60 per workstation per month and $50 to $75 per phone line per month. Now, guys, I made up these numbers, and they could completely not relate to anything, but is it clear to you what I offer for silver and gold and why you would choose one or the other? Was that clear? Sure. Is that, is that intentional? Is, it, is that the lowest offering, the best way to package that lowest offering? Okay, so the question is, is this example the best way to package a lower offering? My answer is no, it is not the best way. I did this to demonstrate the difference. Your business has to plug into this based on what you do, not on this generic example, but is it clear that one's more expensive and you get more for more money? Right? I, I'm just wondering, was it, so there's no particular reason you chose to do the break fix or just hourly on I made it up. Okay, okay. I made it up. I could have done this like this. I could have made this all break fix. I could have made it all managed services. It really doesn't matter. All you need to understand is you want three prices, low, medium, and high, and then you plug in what you're going to offer at those prices, OK? And again, I just made this up for, for the example. Okay. Now, finally, I have a platinum level of service. My platinum level of service, 
We're going to provide the storage and the software that you need. We'll provide that for you. We're going to give you full help desk services. If anything breaks down, you just call our help desk. We're going to provide your ISP, your VoIP, and we're going to provide mobile services as well. We're not only going to host your website, we'll do social media marketing for you, email marketing, newsletter, and your blog. The cost of that is 50 to 150 per workstation per month and 50 to 75 per device per month. Now, what's important here, do you understand how each one costs more and you're getting more? Do you see? Now, would I make it easy for a client to pick? Is that, okay, if you were, to, if you were my client, which one would you pick? Is it, are the differences clear? Yes? Okay, so guess what the next exercise is? Break out your pen, break out your brains. I want you to write three levels of service for your business and three different price points. We're gonna take about, about five minutes for this exercise. So, your business, think, I want a basic service, uh, a midterm service, and a premium service at different price points. Think about it, write it down, go right ahead. And by the way, silver, gold, and platinum, you can make up your own tiers, call them whatever you like. I've heard basic care, premium care, total care. I've heard different ways to do it. You know, that's a great question. The question is, is it okay to have a fourth one? And all the training that I've ever taken and of all the things I've ever done, four can work, but three works better. Why, I have no idea. But think about it. Coach, business class, or first class, you know, it just seems to be everyone does it this way. For some reason, human beings pick between three. And 90% of the time, guess what the people pick? Which one? The one in the middle. You know, and I tell them, you know, if they can't make up their mind, we'll take the one in the middle, we can always upgrade you to the other one later, right? So, with that same argument, why not go two? Why not go two? Um, all I could say is, based on my personal experience in testing, two definitely works. I've done tons of business based on, do you want, uh, uh, do you want it in this color or that color? Do you want... I'm going to share with you... All, all I can say is that I've tested these, I've tested two, I've tested four. The one I just tell you rolls from my personal experience. But you all get the idea is that it's not a yes or no, you're giving them a choice. So, by the way, ultimately, how can you find out if two, three, or four works best by doing what? Testing. So ultimately, you've got to test this yourself. My experience has been three, but two works, four works. You just need to test. <coughs> So that's interesting. So you could actually say, so we have three choices. One choice is do nothing. The second choice is do our, our, our standard care. The third choice is to do our premium care. That's a potential way to do it too. Or you could add that as another choice, sure. Why is doing nothing an option? Okay. It, it, is an option. it is an option and it's an obvious option. But when you, could, you could qualify that by saying you do nothing and continue to have these same sort of issues. Oh, okay. You know? All right, so putting it, say, letting them know that you're not Doing nothing is not is a bad choice. Okay. What, what it's doing is it's acknowledging the obvious. Yes. They don't have to buy from you. And if you walk in with an assumption that they are going to buy, at least where I live in southern Arizona, it's seen as arrogant. And if you walk in and say, look, you can do nothing, I think you should, and here's why. 
then what that does is it gets them on your table because you're willing to step to them and show at least at least acknowledge that they're in the position of power. You're you're empower, the empowering questions that you talked about last time. It's it's empowering them. You're stating something that acknowledges they have power, they have authority, and you're now advising them and saying, I don't think that's a wise choice, but it is a choice that I know you know you have. It's not it's not telling them something they don't know. They yeah. know it's a choice. Yeah. So and you know sometimes all I can tell you is that it could definitely work. Just stating the obvious, that's a way of blowing up an objection before it even comes up. You know, they might say no, they might say, well, I don't want to do any of these three. So by stating it, you kind of blow it up and defuse it before it comes up. Okay, um, anyone else like to share? Okay, what I'm going to ask next, would someone like to share their three levels of service? Would someone like to share, please? Nobody? No one has three levels of service? I got one volunteer, here's a mic. Oh, I got to turn it on. Hold on. Okay. This is just a rough. It should be on. Tap, tap it. Yeah, it's on. This is the rough draft. Uh, for the silver plan, uh, which is my cheapest plan, I chose to include monitoring and patching and AV. Uh, no maintenance of any kind. And that's 35 bucks per month per machine and 100 bucks a server. Uh, the gold plan, which would include monitoring, patching, uh, any virus, routine maintenance, quarterly reports, and a discount on on-site services. Also including remote support, um, and I haven't come up with a price for that, but I'm edging towards uh, 75 per machine. And then for my platinum plan, which is monitoring, patching, antivirus, monthly optimization, quarterly reports, includes on-site support for each machine. I'm uh, looking at 95 per machine and 250 per server. Fantastic. Okay. Did it, was that clear to everybody how we priced it and what you got? Very clear. 95 per server was the last one, right? No, it was 95 per, per workstation. And at 95 per workstation and 250 per server. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share three tiers of service? Okay. Now, this is going to take a little work for you to do. How would you like it if you had a template just like this, only customized for you, for your business? You, okay. I'm sending you a PowerPoint with a slide just like this that you can customize for yourself. I'll, I'll show it to you in a moment. Now, all I can tell you. Do you remember what I said in the beginning of this class? That in order to get a commitment, what do you need to do first? Bond, right? If you do a good job bonding and then you present like this, it's going to be a lot easier. And remember, I'm sharing with you whatever you're going to offer, always put it on one page, not a hundred, <coughs> one page, just like a menu in a restaurant. When you go in, you see a menu, you pick something, right? Do you ever go into a restaurant, see a menu, and say, I changed my mind and leave? Yeah. Usually you pick something. Well, maybe a couple, right? But I'm saying when you present it like this, you make the client's buying decision much, much easier. Oh, I got three things. OK, I'll take this one. OK, so now, can I give you a quick demonstration? All right? So I'm just going to demonstrate quickly. So we help accountants. Um, get uh, more uptime and less downtime with their system by providing end-to-end -end managed services. What's been your biggest challenge with that issue? And if you're an accountant, you're going to tell me. And I'm going to say, great, can I show you how I can help you with that? And you say yes, and I pull out my little menu. Here's the three ways we can work together. What's best for you? Is that clear to everybody? No? Yes? A little bit? All right. So I talked today about getting a commitment. This is the quickest and easiest way I know how to go from zero, they're not even interested, or they're not even thinking about it, to get them to not only they're thinking about it, but they're actually going to agree and pick one of them. Now, if they just pick basic care, is that OK with you? It's a lot better than getting a no, isn't it? And once you get them with basic care, you can start moving them up with, from the basic package to maybe the, the intermediate or the premium. Now, what I'd like to do next is we are going to break into uh, to teams. So let's break into teams of four. And this exercise that I just gave you, I'd like everybody to get a chance to practice it at least once. And if you don't have your, your uh, presentation ready, all three parts, don't even worry about it. Just do your best. OK, let's break into groups of four. And let's practice it just like this. Go right ahead. It could be a group of five, a group of three, you know, it's okay. But if, but if you go with four, at least you get to hear some other people present.
Just turn right around. You got you guys right here. Yeah. Yeah, you could be a group of three or five. That's okay. Okay. Did you send, did you get the text? No, but I'll leave you with this. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll make sure that we get it to you. Sure. One second. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. You're going to send a text with Sales 105, your name and email, to 58885. 5885? 5. Yep. And you'll get the notes for this class. Sales 105. Sales 105, yep. your name, your email, and then send to 58885. Okay. Okay? Sure. Try to rotate so you all get a different uh, turn to present. You know, you want to hear this, you also want to present it, so keep it moving, take turns presenting. So far, so good? Yeah. Is it, does, it, does it feel any different than what you used to do before the class in terms of presenting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Remember when I talked about the four stages, right? right? You're still in that third stage of conscious competence. After you present like this a little bit, it, you don't even think about it. Okay. So, one thing that came up, I mean, this isn't necessarily all in one sit down. Um, you you got to find the information out before you can bring in the That's nap. right. You That's know what right. I mean? I mean remember, I'm not going to sit down and talk to you and then go, okay, here it is, because I don't know. Do you remember how I said there was five steps follow of a sale? Up, follow up. This is right. the fifth step. Right. So, you know, you may not be closing on the first meeting. Some right. of these things are two steps. Right. First you do a network analysis, then you come back with your with your report and you close. I'm going to share that with everybody, okay? Okay, everyone, I, I had a great question, okay? The question is, Todd, do I do this right away in the first meeting? Sometimes you do a two-step close. The first meeting, you're doing what I taught you about bonding and finding out what they need, and then you say, we're going to analyze this and we'll come back next week. Based on our analysis, then you would do the close. So you don't necessarily have to you know, close the same time you meet with them. You could do it in a two-step process. Thanks for sharing that. Okay? All right, continue. Continue practicing. We've got a couple more minutes. Thoughts or questions? Good? Okay. How are we doing? Thoughts or questions? No, we're doing fine. Okay. Thank you. Sure. You are in the picture. It was an MSB. Oh, no, you're such a How are we doing? How are we doing? Thoughts or questions? Not yet. We're going to go so around yet. So. Okay. All right.
Okay, we got a couple more minutes. Okay, a couple more minutes. Can you make you can have a copy of that one too? Oh, you know what? Do you keep doing it. I'll do this one. Oh. You do that one. Thank you. If you just pass one over. That's for later. We'll, we'll, we'll use this at the end. Everybody, let, let's go back to our seats. Everyone, let's go back to our seats. Okay, so let's do a, a who would like to share their experience? Okay, everyone back to your seats, back to your seats, thank you. Okay, now, who would like to share their experience from that brief role play in terms of how it felt just presenting? Would anyone like to share? Okay, so let's do a review. One of the things I talked about today were competitive advantage. Quick show of hands, how many people now feel they, they could distinctly say what their competitive advantages are. Can we all say that? Okay, all right. The next thing I talked about was how to communicate those competitive advantages to generate interest in a prospect and we put together your value proposition. If somebody asked you, why should I do business with you instead of someone else, how many of you feel that you've got that value proposition honed enough that you could just you know, use that? Quick show of hands. Okay, we got that, okay. Then finally, I, I shared with you how to present your services on a one pager to give someone three choices. A low priced, mid priced, and high priced option. How many of you feel maybe you didn't finish that today, but at least you got a framework to take back home and work with? Okay, great. Now, at the beginning of this class today, I asked you a question. How valuable would it be if you mastered the art of getting a commitment? Everyone agreed it would be a valuable skill. How much training have you gotten on the IT side compared to the training you've gotten on the sales side? Would you say that's a little bit uh, skewed? Would you agree? Okay, how much would practicing this be worth to you if you mastered it in dollars? A lot. Three things I taught you, three. It's not going to take a lot of time for you to, to really master this. My experience working with people one-on-one -on -one is it generally takes about five or six presentations of actually doing this before you get it down. And you know when you really start getting it? The first close you get. I'm going to tell you, I had one of um, uh, the people I work with, I taught him to this. And you know, generally we talk about every two weeks. So two weeks go by. And I asked him, so, you know, what's, what's been going on since we last spoke? He was floored. He found that he was getting customers who were already working with him, and he was just reviewing this with them, and they were upselling themselves to higher levels of service. 
just because he reviewed it. He had somebody on the phone, and he just described these three levels of service over the phone, and they picked the, the top one right away. He was blown away by how quickly this worked. It's incredibly valuable, and it just takes a little bit of practice on your part, but don't think you're gonna, now if you taught me today how to take apart a server and put it back together, do you think I could walk out of this class and do it? There's no way, right? So I've been doing these skills for years and years. I don't expect for you to master them in just one session, but at least you all got the opportunity to understand what to do and to practice it. Remember, there's four levels to competence. Before this class today, did you know how to do a one-page close? Did you ever hear of a one-page close? Unconscious incompetence, you didn't even know about it. Suddenly, you saw me review it with you, and you say, oh, that's how I do a one-page close. Now you got to practice it, and finally, you're going to do this, and it's not going to take more than six or seven times before you can do it in your sleep. It's going to come very, very quickly. So. There's five steps to getting a sale. My first class, we talked about making a friend. This class, we talked about getting a commitment. But did you all feel that I left out some stuff in the middle, like about how to describe what it is that you do? I can't cover everything in two hours. I figure most of you have probably described what you do before. So conducting a profile, presenting your services, you know, I really didn't go too deep with. But we did cover offering a choice and getting a commitment in this class. Now, for those of you who'd like to take that step to really master these skills, I would encourage you to enroll in the Pocket MBA program. This is one component of that program. My MBA cost me $60,000 in two years, but yet 80% of that value came in 20% of the content. That 20% content will be in the Pocket MBA. In addition to getting training, which you could take anywhere in the world, anytime that you want, based on your own hours, you're gonna get access to the faculty one-on-one -on -one time by appointment for you. If you've got a casework that you wanna come and work on, we can work on it together. I never got that with my $60,000 MBA. My instructor would answer my email or answer my question in class. I couldn't walk in and talk to him for an hour. Um, we've got a show special. We'll break it into three installments of $1,000. Next week, if you wanna do it in installments, it's gonna be $3,600. We got a VIP party tonight at 8 for all of the people that are going to enroll. And also, if you like this conference, we're going to invite you back to come to the spring conference. That's included with the tuition. So in front of you, you got your evaluation forms. And I also gave you an enrollment form for the Pocket MBA that looks like this. OK, please fill them out. And at this time, I'm open for questions. Question. My email address is todd.colb as in boy, e c k, at c as in Charlie, c as in Charlie, g as in girl, coaching.com. Todd.colbeck at ccgcoaching.com. And when you send me your text for the materials from the class, you're going to get an email from me with my email attached. Okay? Um, any other questions? What was this class? Is that sales 102? Sales 105. There's five steps to making a sale, so we covered the fifth step today, sales 105. Yeah, the, first the first one was 101, right. Okay, uh, any other questions? What's, what's the time commitment to this program? Okay, so if you're gonna enroll in the pocket MBA, I would say reasonably ballpark about an hour a day for 12 weeks would be, I would say you could do it in an hour a day. And you think about it, it's only for 12 weeks, and uh, I would say absolutely it would be, you know, you could do it in an hour a day. Okay, next question. Does that include reading that we have to study? That includes reading, watching videos, everything you need to study about an hour a day, yes. Is that a uh, I would say that's up to you. It depends how fast you read. You know, I know the videos that I put together for the program are probably a half hour to 45 minutes each. These notes that you're going to get are about a 15 minute read. You could do it in an hour. You know, if you want to watch a video and then read the book tomorrow, that's up to you. Yes, question? Um, the, the question is, is it done online? It's done with a combination of online and live webinars with your instructor and one-on-one -on -one training by appointment with the instructor of your choice. It combines all three. Plus, you get to come here to these events and meet your cohort and hang out, you know, in a live event. So it's a combination of both. 
Okay, the question is, is there a place you can go to get the rest of the program? The answer is yes. Go to mypocketmba.com. In the email that you're getting from me, there's going to be a video attached that tells you a little bit more about the program as well. And we had a booth up here. If you couldn't come to the booth, um, I believe I've still got a flyer that I can give you. Okay, any other questions? Question? Okay, sales is just one component of the Pocket MBA. We have leadership, entrepreneurship, uh, there's a financial uh, section, operations, and again, that whole uh, curriculum is online at mypocketmba.com. Just like a traditional MBA. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so the question is, once I get my learning materials, do I have access to it after it? Absolutely, they're your materials, yes. Did that, did that answer the question? Okay, anything else? Okay, now do we all feel that we, we know a little bit more about closing business and getting commitments than we did at the beginning of the class? Did we succeed? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, please put your forms at the end of the table, we'll collect them.